Today we're going to paint the Mexican blanket or firewheel wildflower. Last time we painted the uh, state flower of Texas. This time it will be the state flower of Oklahoma. Uh, I did a little sketch. This is what it looks like. The petals on the firewheel come in sets of three that are close together and there's sort of varying distance between the sets. Sometimes they look a little scraggly. You might want to take a photograph of this sketch or make a sketch of your own, but that's what I'll be working from. The fire wheel itself, or the Mexican blanket itself, looks like this. Red petals with bright yellow tips. Uh, sort of a fluffy center that has some uh, yellow when you get to the middle of it. And I have another photograph here that you can look at where you have some of the Mexican blankets in nature and you can see where I'm referring to the separation between the sets of three petals that are sort of squished close together. They all come out of one point. The ones in Oklahoma seem to be much more regular. The ones in Texas seem to be sort of scraggly like this. I like scraggly myself, but you can paint them however you like. Off we go. So I'm going to start with a sketch. Even though this is probably so light that you can't see it, I've left the other one up here so that you can see that one as we go and be making your own sketch based more or less on that composition. It's always fun to have flowers in different positions. So we have one that's almost to its side, one that's face on, and one that's a bud. Um, as usual, I will do just the most minimal drawing and do it so very lightly with the watercolor pencil that you're probably not going to be able to see it on the video. I'll do the circles for the centers. I'll do a green line coming down where the stems are coming down. And I'm not being precise. I'm not going up to the edges on everything. The uh, little pointy things around the edges are green. Those will be leaves. Um, they're all the way around this bud one. And then there's some red and yellow beginnings of petals that will point straight up on that one. Uh, the others, we're going to do a broad curved V and then make it into three tips. Maybe on the other side, another broad curved V, make it into three tips. Another one, some are bigger, some are smaller, some are closer together, some are farther apart. Not very precise. Okay. This top one, you'll notice the two petals in the back, we're just seeing a little edge of them as they curve back over and away from us. So we'll start with those and we'll just put in the sides and a little curve for the top. Sides and a little curve for the top. Then we'll bring in some of these soft uh, curved edged V's with three tips to represent the petals. And there can be three or four of those. One of them might overlap if you have a little trouble fitting it in. That's okay. And then there will be some small bits. Any place there's space in between, you can fit some of the little green leafy bits. Two, two or three if possible. Okay, very simple drawing. Once again, we always say it's not about... The fanciness of the drawing. It's just about having a drawing and getting it done. I'm going to try and leave this up here um, until it gets in my way for those of you who might still be drawing it. I like to start with the circles in the middle and they were kind of a uh, red outer portion and yellow in the very center. So I'll start with a little yellow in the center of each one clean my brush, go to a, a red, and I'm using a very uh, orangey red, Quina Daniel Smith Quinactone Coral here. I'm going to outline that circle 
then I'm going to fill in till it touches that yellow because then I, what I get is some automatic blending. Now see how the circle in the center of that one is more of a flattened oval because you're seeing that flower from the side. This one looks more like a fried egg because you're seeing the flower from straight on. And this one here, we're going to have to work around these funny little upstanding buds of petals to give you some red center there. Clean the brush again, move on to some greens. We've got the green stems and we've got the green um, little tiny leaves that were around the bud originally. It can be seen very clearly here but on the other two will just be the occasional something peeping out from between the petals that you can see. Okay, and then the stems. This one's pretty easy. This one we have to be careful to leave room for all the petals that are going to exist, but yet still have a little connection where there's not a petal. And here it comes all the way around there. It's always interesting to have stems at odd angles and crossing each other and things like that. It looks much better than to just have a bunch of vertical lines in a row on a painting. Okay, next comes the petals. And as you notice, the petals have bright yellow tips. So we're going to use our strong yellow that leans to the orange side. And we're just going to put a little triangle in each one of those tips where we have a set of three petals. There'll be a set of three tips. Once again, you can always improve your drawing as you do your painting. And you will have a chance later if we decide to ink this one to improve your painting when we do the inking. The two petals in the back don't get tips because you're only seeing the beginnings of those petals, not the tips. Okay, and then while they're still wet, we want to run in with that red. And we want it to be pretty strong, so I'm actually going to put a few drops of water in here and mix up a fair amount of the red that will be pretty strong so that we can uh, go through those petals quickly. So we're going to start at the middle and come out and at this point I'm just putting a line on each one. I'm not even trying to make it the whole petal and I'm actually touching the yellow because I want it to sort of run into the yellow and mix there. I'm going to do this one up here. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now I'm going to go back with a little more precision and try and get the shape, that curved V that we talk about, and filling in and making sure each one uh, goes up to and touches and melds a little bit with the yellow. Oop, that one melded a little bit too much with the yellow. We need some more red there. A little curve to each set of three. Filling in a little bit up here. And once again, I do like a little bit of scraggliness to them. So don't hesitate to leave some scraggle. Now, the little bud that we looked at, I'm going to have to stop and look up and see whether those beginnings of petals are all red or whether they've got some yellow in them. Back in a second. Okay, I'm back and they are red with just the tiniest bit of yellow at the tips. So I'm going to do what we did with the other and start with the yellow. Going around, little dot 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 there. Then while that's still wet, come back in with the red and make it obvious that these are separate little petals. They're coming together towards the bottom there, all attached like that. Okay, now the other thing I noticed when I looked at the photograph is that the 
outer part of the circle is a darker red uh, than the inner part of the circle. So we're going to come in with some more darkness here. And it doesn't hurt to make this a little bit bigger than it was before, so it really is seriously attached to those little green leaves and things. And oh my goodness, here we forgot to do the back, back two petals. So there's one little curve to it. And there's another little curve to it. And actually, there'd be a little bit that you'd see out here and out here, too. We'll go like that. Now, I put those circles around these centers, but I don't want that to be a hard edge. So I'm going to come in with some clean water on my brush and soften that edge. Well, I just went away and took a walk while this was drying. So you may want to pause for a moment to make sure yours has some time to dry. Uh, but after you do, we will do one more thing before we start inking, and that is to put some leaves in. I'm going to go with the darker green that's on my other palette. Uh, I actually like using a variety of greens in leaves, and I like being a little careless with them so that there's some white splotches too. Now, if you look at the drawing, they're sort of long and thin and coming up from the ground, and they might even make them a little longer and thinner than they look in the sketch. Oops, that one might go in front of that stem instead of behind it. If you scrub away at the stem that's underneath, it will disappear. And if it doesn't disappear, we'll put some more heavy color on right there. Um, I'm starting these with the, the teal, but I'm going to add some some of the other uh, green in there too. Make sure that looks like two leaves right next to each other, one in front, one in back. Now let's get some more greens in there so it'll be closer to the green of the stem. Nice and pointy, nice and wide. Colors in nature are never just a straight, solid color, or if they are, the light makes them appear not to be. And so you can really, really play with colors and do some different things there. Let them run into each other a little bit too. Okay, so now there's something a little interesting going on in the bottom of the painting, just like there was in the sketch. Now we're going to start... Um, a little bit of inking, and if you like your painting at this point, you do not have to ink it. Inking is completely optional. It's part of my style to sometimes ink things, but not all the way. I will confess that the less happy I am with the way something looks at this point, the more likely I am to ink it because I feel that the ink can improve it. Let's take a look again at the photograph of the flower, Mexican hat flower, Mexican, I'm sorry, Mexican blanket flower. Um, and see what the center looks like. It's all little pointy things poking up. See what kind of lines and definition you see coming out on all of these petals. See how where it changes from the yellow to the red on the petal. It's not a straight line across. It's jagged and it's different on every petal. And there is, to a small degree, some mixing of the yellow and the red. So if we can try and play that up a little bit with our inking, we'll be doing a good thing. So let's start with the centers. So instead of being perfectly round like this one looks here, we're going to make them a little bit jaggedy, bumpy, rumply around the edges and around the section that's a lighter color. Then, this is something I just like to do within that area, so it's kind of a donut shape there, within that area, I'm going to outline the bits that are the darkest. Like there's some up here at the top that just happens to be darker than the rest. So I'm going to outline that. There's a little green that snuck in there. I'm going to outline that. There's a little bit of red down here that's kind of dark. I'm going to outline that. And I'm purposely using sort of rounded 
edges or jagged edges on things here. My little yellows in the middle are kind of not quite all yellow there. It's that. Um, anything I can see that looks a little bit different from the others, I'm putting some lines around. And this is the kind of thing that will just grow on you and your eyes over time. Some places I'm including more, some places I'm going for a little bit less. Some places I'm making up a little bit of change because there wasn't enough change there to make my eye happy. But see how we're getting sort of a scraggly looking middle out of it? I'm liking that. So now let's move to this one up here. Same type of thing where we're going to get the edges scraggly where they meet the um, petals. But then this top part, I'm going to actually go kind of actually jagged because it is truly the, the little bits that are pointing up. Then I can do the same thing. Circle around the yellows. Anything that's a little bit lighter or a little bit darker gets a little extra attention from the pen. And all of it very wobbly squiggly. And once again, if there's an area where you think there ought to be something a little more or different, just put a little O in there. Makes it interesting. Now this one down here is a little bit different. So across this side is going to be the jagged edge. Across this side you're going to only see it as it goes around these little bits of petal that are here. And the petals are very rounded. We might as well go around and do all the petals while we're at it. They're not very regularly shaped, but they're interesting. Now around here I can go a little jaggedy. Okay, so now I'm going to do the inside of this one the same as the others. The lightest lights first, and then going around and finding dark bits and bits that didn't get paint on them. And there isn't a lot of variety in here, so I'm just going to add some shapes for interest. Just wherever I think there ought to be something like that. While we're on this one, we can go ahead and do the uh, small leaves here. They should be pointy. They should be coming out from the center of the flower there. If you got a fat section, you can make it into two if you want to. Now I'm starting to see the reds that leak down into that, so I'm going to give those some little niblets of color. If you want to, you can leave the whites like that, um, or you could go ahead and outline them with your pen, whatever you like. And you notice I changed the shape on this one, and what people are going to see is the, the ink shape. I'm thinking we'll change a little over here too, I like that. Um, more than the rest. So let's do the same over here. Get some little these things. I'm making them longer and skinnier than the than I painted them just because I like the idea of them being longer and skinnier. Right there. And there were a couple up here in between those. I think there was one in here that we sort of lost. Now let's look at the outside petals. Remember these last two petals on the top one? Or just little curvy things like that where they're leaning down and then there was some sort of semi there petals there that's good enough to show the way they're curving away from you to the back but then these front ones we want to get back to defining this idea that there's three petals that kind of go together let's look at this picture again okay one two three petals all coming out from almost the same exact point there but each with its own yellow section on the end and uh, repeat the sets of three petals all the way around. Okay, so we're going to start over here, make it a little skinnier than I painted it at the edge of the flower, and then clearly delineate the three there. 
One, two, three. Sometimes it's easiest to do the two outside edges first. Boy, this is a baby one here, isn't it? One, two, three. One, one, two, three. Very nice. Let's get those done here. Outside, outside, coming in, and then that middle one. This might be the easiest way to do it. Two outsides coming in, and then just a tip for the middle one. Sometimes the middle one's sort of hidden behind the other. Sometimes it's out in front. The yellow was a little hard to see when we painted it, but now that we're inking it, it just jumps out and pops. Now, I like to have a little bit of a line on the stems because uh, they get lost otherwise and you can ink around them the way we inked around the petals or you can do just a little what i call a lost and found line that um, establishes where the shadow side of the stem is the bottom side this one curves so the shadow changes from one side to the other it goes behind that one it goes behind the leaf this one kind of comes down like this so now now they feel more structured like they belong in a place there my leaves these two turned out a little bit funny we're going to try and improve the leaves as we ink them we're going to make them pointier and we're going to give them a little line down the middle this one here really needs some life to it see i'm not worried at the fact that it's got some white in there big old point on this one and down there and left something there see that looks better than it did before now some of you may like to have more shadowing you should feel free to do um, create more shadows in there for instance right underneath the flower the whole stem is probably in shadow for a little ways it's shadowed by the flower itself so though something like that adds to things and makes them look realistic sometimes half of a leaf is shadowed or one leaf throws a shadow on another leaf that you can do with little ink marks or cross hatching something like that um, you may also wish to do some more detail work in these petals it's fine to leave them the way they are but if you want to do more detail work, um, you can go one of two directions. One is to try and make them look more realistic and really define the little lines where the red stops and the yellow begins like that. And the other one would be to be more abstract and just try and make it interesting looking the way we made the inside interesting looking. And to do that, you're going to start by outlining anything that is white or very, very light. So all these funny little spots that are within your inked petal, but not um, covered there. And then we would do the second lightest things and the division between the light and the dark things like that. And then we would look into those reds and see, can we see some more? color change in there that this is a little bit redder here and this is a little redder here this sort of a red thing like that i'm seeing it's it's amazing what you'll see after a while another thing you could do if you want realism is to just put some stripey things down them like that and the other thing you do is kind of a combination do do some lines across where the color changes, do some marking of what's the lightest, and then do some stripes, maybe even some stripes in this one. And sometimes I'll wreck something when I ink it 
and I just say to myself, well, I'm learning more about inking every time, aren't I? This one with these ones pointed backwards, they would just have a few stripes in them because you're really not seeing the, the point where the color changes. Now the little buds were, were interesting. They were kind of roundish on the end. So maybe I'll do little circles on the end around the ye yellow or where the yellow ought to be if I had managed to get yellow on all of them. And there you could put in a little bit of shadows around this join between the bottom of the bud and the flower there. Okay, so you can keep inking. If you like more ink, you can stop. Uh, this is your flower. Do it until you enjoy it. And if you did it too much, start the tape over and try it again. I usually do things three times to get something I'm really happy with. I hope you're happy with yours. I do want to thank you for painting with me today. There's lots of places where you can follow my art, subscribe, like it, things like that. But I'm interested in seeing your art too, so I'm hoping you'll be posting it and putting a little at man hanky so I can see it. Thanks a whole bunch. Bye.